Okay, so Pie News episode 60, and just do a quick sweep of my desk to see that there's not anything top secret that I'm not allowed to show. No, I think we're good. So first up, this is my KDE build of Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, and uh, it's had a bit of a tweak, uh, or a lot of a tweak, uh, by Munker. So we're going to NeoFetch. Uh, I've only just noticed this, actually. I was just checking something else with NeoFetch, and... Uh, you can see that Monk has put the Afterburner logo on there and uh, has done some tweaks and some changes to this. Uh, now, it's not the OS that I'm going to be making available for download, but if you want to contact Monka on the Armoury Discord, uh, I'm happy for him to share it. Uh, one of the great things that he's added to it, and there's several of them, it's now got Wine in it, and uh, we've got Wine Desktop and Wine Configuration. Uh, now, I'm currently set up as Windows Vista, uh, so basically this allows you to use Windows apps and Windows games in Linux and works on the Pi and works surprisingly well. And uh, one of the really exciting things that I had was uh, on Wine Desktop, I've managed to get Elastomania working. So uh, under Start, and this is just the demo version, I maybe need to try and get the full version working, um, is uh, Elastomania, click on ELMA, And I can log in, and it all seems to be working fine. Let's turn my speaker on. Uh, it does. This is the speed it runs at. Yeah, the sound is working on it. I really like the sound effects on this. Basic, but but really familiar. Uh, and this is a bit like the uh, X Moto that I installed in this build from Linux, but this is definitely a better version and does it and and works exactly as I'd expect it to. So really, really happy with that. But I'll do more about this OS probably in a separate video, or at least the wine part of it. So from Munker's comment on the Discord, uh, added box 86, stroke 64, plus wine, KDE Plasma Wayland, just choose KDE Wayland from your login screen from the drop-down menu, added Afterburner apt repo to install third-party apps and keep them up to date, like WebCord, Box64, PZip, Belena Etcher, enabled hardware acceleration on Chromium, it was running with software rendering, although the video performance was working really well on that, but uh, I'll have to have a look at that as well in, in this other video. Added Flatpak to the KDE Plasma software store to have a bigger choice of apps to install. Have fun and hope you can play now your favourite x86 game with wine on your favourite OS. So much appreciated, Munka. I'll definitely be playing around with this. Right, let's get on with the news. So first up from Raspberry Pi and DIY Project on Facebook, Pi playing T-Rex Jump. And uh, if, we, if we zoom in and have a look, so you can see there's a sensor on the screen that detects the people coming along and the dinosaur jumps and it's using the uh, servo down here to press the space bar. You can see a breadboard. I believe it's a Pico. It does mention a Pico in the comments, but I don't know if it, co it, if it says that it definitely is. But yeah, really just a bit of fun, but uh, really interesting way of using a Pi. So next up, another one on Facebook on Raspberry Pi and DIY projects. Uh, just availability, really. $160 for a Pi 4 with a case. Uh, I know it's not cheap, but if you're desperate for a Pi, uh, it does look like quite a nice case, and uh, it is still showing up as in stock. Estimated delivery one to two business days. I really like the look of this one, uh, Moo Pie Box, I don't know how you pronounce it, but uh, easy to use music player, local music files, Spotify and streams from the internet can be played. The operation via touchscreen is child's play for young and old. So you can see there's a touchscreen uh, in, well, if I scroll down, uh, so you can see there's uh, part of the interface here as well. And if we flick through, there's various different things it shows you on there. Features music box for young and old, touch display, easy to use, update functions, Spotify, album playlist, premium accounts required, local music. Uh, have a look through. If you're looking for uh, a small boom box that you want to carry around, uh, it has all the instructions here of everything you need, even the shopping list. It's really nicely done. And uh, if, it's, if this is a project that you want to try yourself, uh, it will work with the older Pis as well, so if availability is an issue, uh, Pi from version 2B is going to be compatible with this. And if we go back to that main page, uh, it comes up in, in German initially, but if you, if you click on the flags, you can change it to different languages as well. And if we scroll down, there are some other projects that uh, this creator has made. And uh, all based around the same sort of thing, but yeah, I really like it. Next up from Tom's Hardware, uh, they did a, a story well, eight days ago now, best Raspberry Pi projects. And one that stood out to me, which I haven't tried, but I think I probably need to have a look at, is uh, Raspberry Pi changes webcam background. 
and you can see here uh, that this guy's created a way of changing the background like they do in lots of the video streaming apps. But it looks like you uh, can do this pretty much with any app because you're using a Pi to create the background. And actually from this, I mean it's a still shot, but it looks pretty good. I'm not sure if there is a video on here we can have a look at a little bit of. Ah, here we go, and here it is working. Yep, yeah, great work, very impressive. This was an interesting one, uh, which I don't, I don't really need to try. Although I may, I might put it on my list to give it a try at some point. Uh, so improve SD card lifespan using log to RAM. Now, generally, I use an SSD or a USB stick. Uh, I've got loads of SD cards, but I usually use them just to sort of mess about with uh, to try out different OSs. But if I like, I'm running this OS now. I'm running this from a 32 gig SSD drive and uh, you don't have to worry about it wearing because SSDs are super reliable. But SD cards aren't designed for running an OS really and so the swaps that they do and, uh, and the extra work that is involved rather than just taking photos or just saving data can put stress on the SD card. So if you want to do this, I don't know how much it's going to uh, impact on performance but it uses RAM to uh, basically mean that it's not doing lots of the complex and the, the very fast writes to an SD card. So yeah, have a look at that. If you've used it already, let me know in the comments what you think of it. Could come in handy for an operating system that you only want to use an SD card in because of maybe price and also just for size for putting it inside something. But you maybe want it to be more reliable and, uh, and the card to last longer and performance might not be an issue for you. I also had uh, a comment which is down here. Uh, so from Tafkawak. Uh, Lee PSP video, your hard work is name checked in the latest video on the official FidoS channel. Uh, so I've done several videos on FidoS, which is basically uh, it's the operating system you get on a Chromebook but running on a Pi. Actually, one of the best video performance uh, that you'll get on any operating system on a Pi 4, and uh, and just really logical to use. So basically, in the video, uh, you can see this is my video where I did a load of tests on web browsers. And uh, I was just testing the performance to see what came out fastest. And he's done a comparison of Fido S compared to the benchmarks that I've used and got some pretty good results. So didn't beat Puffin, um, but has beaten everything else in the test on some of these. Uh, Puffin is a cloud-based web browser, so you, you can't really count it uh, like for like, but it is also very impressive. And I'm told if you've got very low data rates, then Puffin is definitely a very good one to use. But have a look at that video and try out Fido S or uh, Chromium OS on the Pi 4. It is a really nice operating system and works very well. Next up, uh, and I think I found another way of getting a Raspberry Pi 4. MechArm Pi 270 is a desktop robotic arm powered by a Raspberry Pi 4 SBC. And if we scroll down, uh, the controller is a Pi 4 Model B. Doesn't say what RAM. Um, but also the price is, uh, what is it, $800? Yeah, 799 on Elephant Robotics online store. But this is a cool piece of kit. Voice control, built-in Raspberry Pi, visual tracking and capture. And if you have a look at a bit of the video, I'll play a little bit of it. But uh, if you're interested in this sort of thing, it is very cool. You see them all moving together. Yeah, I won't keep playing it, but yeah, it's worth looking at if you like robots. Next one was a handheld uh, based on a Raspberry Pi Pico, and you can see it looks like Breakout here. Some little tiny buttons, some 3D printed bits. So a tiny gaming console running homebrew versions of Snake, Breakout, Pong, and a few more. And there's a video in there as well. It does, it does look cool, and the fact that it's in a tin as well, so you can carry it around. Yeah, my sentiment's too small a screen for me, uh, but, uh, but I do admire the work. Next up on Reddit, uh, someone's built their own thermostat. Uh, now I've got problems with my thermostat at the moment. I was thinking of getting one of the uh, Google Nest ones, but uh, this looks very cool. It's uh, beyond my skills, definitely. I don't want to be messing around with the wiring on my thermostat, but if you're into that, I recommend you have a look. More Reddit, and I like this one. Uh, so the Pi 3A Plus uses a micro USB connection, which is just a horrible connection. Um, but uh, this is, Quite a lot of work to avoid a micro USB and you can see it's a USB-C here and uh, a little breakout cable so it's still using a micro. I suppose it could probably be soldered directly onto there. There you go, there's a closer look if you want to see. Back there about five years ago I went to the Raspberry Pi forums and suggested they use USB-C on the power port. They banned me. <laughs> More Pico stuff. Researchers clone an Apple AirTag with a Raspberry Pi Pico. Their paper outlines had a voltage glitch, the built-in microcontroller and then reprogram it. 
some clever stuff going on there. Here we have a fancy looking Pi camera uh, on Reddit. And if we scroll down, so there's details on the specs in the post camera module. It's using a Pi 3B plus. Yeah, I saw that as well. Uh, does anyone know why an optical lens has a megapixel rating? Am I missing something? And there is an answer to that in here. Different lenses do resolve different resolutions, so some lenses cannot resolve very high resolutions. So 3 megapixels on this lens is indicating it can resolve up to 3 megapixel 1080p. Okay, you learn something every day. We have a uh, update on this water-cooled pie. I think I've shown this before, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. There is a lot going on in there to cool a tiny pie. There's, <laughs> the processor is somewhere under here. And there'll be links to all these stories in the description if you want to know more about them. I like this one on Tom's Hardware. Um, I, years ago, I used to work for a Sony Center, and the range of clock radios we used to do, there must have been about 20 that Sony made at one point of clock radios. You could have all different types, and they've kind of, they're not as popular as they used to be. And uh, this has uh, one of the display, I've got a display like this in my Pico kit. Raspberry Pi Pico alarm clock housed inside laser cut case. And there is a video on this as well, how you can use the buttons to set it up and wake you up in the morning and things. This was a story on Tom's Hardware, but I guess it's funny, isn't it? What, what you Google comes up a lot more. So I've been doing a lot of Googling about Picos and breadboards and just trying to do a bit more of the maker stuff. And uh, this had a really nice explanation about breadboards. And uh, if you're interested in doing that sort of thing, uh, it's all illustrated and it kind of goes through some of the things you can use it for. And uh, yeah, if, you, if you're into the maker side, you'll already know all this, I'm sure. But uh, I learned some things from it. So I've done one video on Pico before uh, when I got sent a kit. And uh, I definitely enjoy doing it. And I just keep meaning to get back to it. And uh, last up, not a Raspberry Pi story, um, but the Orange Pi 800 came up on my feed. Uh, I'm being sent an RK3599 processor, I think it is, uh, which does look very impressive. Uh, but if you have a look at this, it will look very similar. If I showed you that and said it was a Pi 800, you would think that we had a new Pi 400. If we zoom in a bit closer, you can see that it has an orange on there but it is an incredibly similar design to the Pi 400. I don't know how that's allowed, but I thought I'd show it anyway because I thought it was interesting to people who are into the Pi. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Such a great game.